Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I have the first in a multi-part series of how to fly the planes in Battlefield 5. This has been requested of me time and time again. Some of you may know me from Battlefield 3 and 4 jet tutorials, and the mechanics in the planes in Battlefield 5 and also Battlefield 1 have been quite different in the jets, so... There are some things that remain the same when it comes to piloting these craft, but there are also a lot of differences. I've always found in Battlefield games that a lot of people are intimidated by the planes, they don't really understand how to use them, can't understand how other people get so amazing killstreaks in them, and people mainly use them for just crashing uh, into enemy teammates, kamikazing them, as uh, is the fashion, of course, as the Japanese side, and also just getting into sniper positions and things that they're really not meant for. So hopefully by the end of this series, you guys will know a thing or two about how to fly them efficiently, and hopefully you'll be getting a few more kills than you were before. So the planes in Battlefield 1 and 5 are very different than jets in Battlefield 3 or 4, if you've played those games before, but you can apply a lot of the same principles. So today we're going to be starting out with the basics. I'm going to be going over sensitivities and key bindings first of all, because without those, you're not really going to be able to do anything. And then we'll be following up with how to best use the machine gun to take down enemy fighters. Alright guys, so here we are in the options and we're taking a look under the basic controls, vehicle mouse aim sensitivity. So I use around 10% with 1600 DPI. 1600 DPI is quite high, I know most of you will probably use 800 or maybe some of you even 400 if you're into competitive shooters. So it's going to be kind of hard to figure out exactly what vehicle mouse aim sensitivity you need depending on the DPI, you know, maybe you just need to multiply it so... If you have half of my DPI, say 800, maybe 20% will be the same as 10% at 1600. I'm not exactly sure, but just play around with whatever feels comfortable for you. It's really just down to aiming when you're strafing targets on the ground. So if you find you're not able to aim at targets quick enough, just tweak it a little bit. I would say anywhere between 10 and 20% is good. Next, we're going to come over to key bindings here. And I'll show you uh, which of these I change. So first things first, you are going to want to bind pitch up to spacebar. And what this is going to allow you to do is keep on uh, pitching up in a dogfight with the maximum sensitivity. So instead of having to scroll your mouse over the your pad, your mouse pad over and over again, you're just going to have to hold down the spacebar. It's going to be way easier. And similarly, I bind pitch down to left alt. Same thing again, if you're going to pitch down, you don't need to pitch down anywhere near as much as you pitch up, but it definitely comes in handy. One other thing you really need to do is don't forget to unbind, where is it, fire. Fire is, as default, bound to the space bar, so don't forget to unbind that, because then every time you pitch up, you will also fire your cannons, which is not very useful, so definitely unbind that one. Uh, another one I like is, I like to put the full map on tab. Um, I just changed those two toggles around. So I put the scoreboard on the M key. Not really a massive deal, but I don't really need to see the scoreboard. I'd rather have a tab as an easy keybind that I can use to expand the map and make it small again. So one more thing that is a big help is exit vehicle. I changed that to B on the keyboard because as default, enter and exit vehicle is E. And the last thing you want in the middle of a dogfight is to accidentally hit your E key and just bail out of your plane. So I'd recommend this one. It doesn't have to be B but just anything that you're not going to hit by accident. Now, free look here, I have actually rebound to the right mouse button, and that's purely because I always use that in Battlefield 3 and 4, and in that game, it is the right mouse button because there is no zoom in Battlefield 3 and 4. And uh, if we come down to zoom, I rebound that to left shift, which is the old afterburner button, and it just so happens there is no afterburner in BF5 uh, and BF1, so... Basically, just swap those two key binds, uh, key binds around. I think as default, it's the middle mouse button that is bound to free lock. I find that really uncomfortable to hold the middle mouse like the scroll wheel and move around, but that's just me. Maybe you prefer it. Switch weapon, I would definitely keep that as F. That is an amazing key bind. A lot of people don't use it. They just hit one and two on the keyboard, but F is a real lifesaver when you're in the middle of a dogfight. So much easier to press. Now, I know a lot of you guys are playing on console, and that's not really as big a deal as when you're playing on PC. It's much easier just to hold the analog stick down and keep on pitching up when you're in a dogfight. 
Obviously though, you're gonna have to try to find some middle ground in your sensitivity, your stick sensitivity, between being able to dogfight efficiently, but also strafe the ground targets without overshooting or undershooting your target and being able to make small little tweaks to your aim there. Okay guys, so without further ado, we're going to cover how to best use the machine gun. So that is your number one key, your primary weapon, your double LMG machine guns to take down enemy fighters. First of all, just know that these weapons and also the other starting weapons you get on the second key are absolutely rubbish for strafing infantry. So if you want to level up the plane and unlock some of the better weaponry for it, Honestly, your best chance of scoring points is going to be taking down enemy planes, and also a lot of the time, they are the greatest threat to you. So that's why we're going over that first and foremost. So first things first, when you take off from the runway, don't just fly straight over the battlefield and get fleegered. I see almost everybody do this. They fly straight for the enemy position, and that is exactly where the enemy assault players with the Fliegerfaust and the enemy plane pilots are going to be expecting you to come from. You should rather go up over a mountain range to the side, over the ocean, and just spend a little bit of time surveying the battlefield, seeing where the enemy planes are, how many of them are alive, and getting a bit of a read on the enemy infantry. And this is where the first person cockpit free look view really comes in handy. Another thing you really need to be aware of is actually keeping your plane level. As you see, I'm strafing this guy here. Um, I have much more surface area to attack once he starts getting away from me. So if you're trying to just get away to your deployment, you really don't want to give the enemy pilot that's on your tail uh, more surface area to shoot for. So just be aware that when you are banking to one side, you're essentially like opening your whole plane up to being Fliegerfausted. It's going to make it way more easy for the infantry to get a shot on you. Okay, so when you do get on an enemy fighter's tail, you really want to make sure you start firing at the correct time. And honestly, you're going to use both first person and third person view for this. Most of the time, I would stay in third person, especially if the pilot in front of you is doing a lot of maneuvering. And really, you want to lead him by just sticking the center of your crosshair on the nose of his plane. That way, most of the time, at most ranges, you should be hitting him with all of your shots. Now, if you're in the first person view, you have to lead him significantly more than that. Um, usually, the goal I go by is trying to keep the entirety, the whole circle of my reticle, in front of the nose of the plane. And usually, if you open up on him like that, you're going to hit him with pretty much every round. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the machine guns in this game overheat really, really fast. And down in the bottom right corner around your ammunition, you can see a little counter there, a circular counter going round. And if that fills up completely, they will overheat for way, way longer than you want them to. So make sure you do not fill that up completely. Just burst fire and only really open up the taps when you think you have a kill shot lined up. Just be aware in this game, enemy aircraft take way way more punishment than they have ever in like battlefield 3 or 4 in bf3 and 4 you could get behind somebody open up on them with your cannons and they were dead in a split second in this game it's going to take you some serious time the other guy is going to have plenty of time to maneuver away maybe even get back to his deployment so just make sure you don't open up way too early overheat your cannons and then give him the opportunity to get away from your sights now, in the clips here in the background, you've probably noticed me using first and third person. I will say, for me, I think first person mode gives you a cleaner shot. If you have a kill shot lined up, the guy is doing a predictable maneuver, he's banking to one side and he's not really being too unpredictable, I would honestly wait until you have a good shot on him, switch to first person mode, and then just go for it. And you'll probably take him down to like 20, maybe even 10% armor. And I would like to just mention quickly here that I am using the bomber specialized variant really here. So I've taken the four times HE cannons, which are better for strafing ground targets. You can take uh, four light machine guns, which will absolutely destroy enemy aircraft. But honestly, the normal ones you get are good enough. If you're patient enough, you take your time taking down the enemy aircraft. It's way better to go with those four HE cannons and just, you know, be able to wreak havoc on the ground in between taking out the enemy planes. 
So like right here, this guy obviously doesn't know uh, that I'm onto him. He's doing pretty predictable maneuvers. So I'm staying in first person mode. You can see that in first person, you really don't get a lot of screen real estate. So if the guy in front of you starts going every which way, you wanna switch out to third person and just get used to that switching between the two view modes, um, the different styles of aiming, how much you need to lead your target by, etc. that goes with each mode. Now, whilst you're mainly going to be using your number one cannons here, your two LMGs, uh, I have the four HE high explosive heavy machine guns on my secondary weapon there. You can use these against aircraft. They are nowhere near as effective as the LMGs. They have probably about four times as much bullet drop as the LMG, so they really are hard to, to use. You have to lead the enemy target by a lot, but if you happen to overheat your LMGs, it is probably worth switching to your secondary weapon, whatever it may be. Um, if you can get the sort of purchase on your enemy, just try to lead him enough to get a few shots on him, because a lot of the time, you know, you'll open up on a guy, he'll be down to 10% armor, you'll have overheated your weapons, and you're just like, oh, the guy's almost dead, you know, but I can't do anything about it. Sometimes it's worth just switching to your secondary weapon and using those to finish him off. All right, guys, so that is going to conclude episode one here. I know there are a lot of other plane tutorials on YouTube. I've seen plenty of people have made a few videos here and there, but I honestly think that the mechanics of the planes and, and being a good pilot in Battlefield is just more than you can shove into one 10 minute video. It deserves its own series, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and go as in depth on each aspect of flying the planes as I possibly can. And uh, hopefully you guys will learn something from it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you did learn something, I would massively appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you want to see the upcoming tutorials other than that have a good day guys and i'll see you all in my next video cheers